In this video, I will be explaining what the matrix equation AX equals B means, as well as solve some questions relating to AX equals B, including some in parametric form. So, let's say the matrix A is made up of the vectors A1, A2, all the way through AN. Then we can write this as a matrix as A1, vector A1 as the first column, A2 as the second column, all the way up to AN as the nth column. And so, we say that A is an M by M matrix because it has M rows and N columns. Now, let's multiply matrix A by some vector X, where X is X1, X2, all the way through Xn. And X1 is the first row, X2 is the second row, Xn is the nth row. And so we'll label X with N rows, and we'll say any random variable Q for the columns. So AX equals the matrix A1, A2, all the way through AN, times matrix X1, X2, all the way through XN. And it is important that X has the same amount of rows that A has columns. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do the uh, matrix multiplication. We then take the dot product of the two matrices that we have for A and X, and we'll get A1, vector A1 times X1 plus vector A2 times X2, so on and so forth, all the way to AN times XN. And we're gonna label the answer as B. And that's just an arbitrary variable that we assign to the equation. So then we have AX equals B. And so then we know through matrix multiplication that B will end up having M rows and Q columns. For questions that we may encounter relating to AX equals B, sometimes we may know the value of X and then try to find the value of B, or it'll be the opposite. We know B and we'll try to find the value of X. So looking at our first problem, we're given the matrix A and X. And so we were looking for B. And we want to turn the two given matrices into this form that we wrote up above. And so we're going to write out our matrix, matrices next to each other. And we're going to put it in the form of A1, X1, and A2, X2. And so once we've done that, we have matrix 3, 2 times 2, and 5, 7 times 3. And just doing 2 times 3, 2 times 2, we get 6, 4, and 3 times 5, 3 times 7, 15, 21. And so then we're left with the matrices 6, 4, and 15, 21, which we can add together to get our answer of 21, 25 for B. And that's the answer to this question. For our next problem, I'm going to go through the row operations pretty quickly. So feel free to pause the video whenever you need. And so we're given the matrix A as well as B. So we're looking for X. And we're going to write our, our givens in the form AX equals B, as we see here on the left. And what we want to realize is that we can write this in augmented matrix form because we have our linear equations on the right. So if we put this into an augmented matrix, we get this right here. And now we're going to use row operations to simplify this. So for the first row, we're multiplying it by negative 1, which is a scalar. Then we're going to multiply the first row by negative 2 and add it to the second row. We'll take the first row, I'm sorry, we'll take the second row and multiply it by one fifth, which is a scalar. Then we'll take the second row, multiply it by four, and add it to the first row. And finally, we're left with this matrix right here. And I'm just going to fix this real quick. That should be a two. Now, once we have this matrix in this form, how do we find an answer? Well, we're going to have to use parametric form. And I'll explain that down here. Now, the first step in parametric form is that we're going to label each column with the appropriate vector from x. And if we remember from the start of the question, we said x equals x, y, and z. Just We just named three variables. And so as we could see here, these columns are x, y, and z. So after labeling our columns, we want to identify the columns that don't have a pivot position. So if you look at this z column, 
we've identified the ones in the first two columns, but the Z column does not have a leading coefficient. And so we call that variable a free variable. Next, we're going to write the rows as a system of linear equations and then solve in terms of the free variables. So each column that has a pivot position, we're going to solve for that using the free variables. So we wrote out our first row as a linear equation. And looking at our first row, the pivot position is in the x column. So we're going to solve for x in terms of our free variable z. And so that's what we've done here. And then we have our second row. And in the second row, the pivot position is in the y column. So we're going to solve for y in terms of the free variable z. And that's there. And we're also going to solve for our free variable. However, we're just going to say it equals itself. Next, we want to use these equations we just found and write x in terms of those equations. So right here, we have x. And right here, we have the variable x. And so this is going to become the new x. And this y is going to become the new y. And then we just have z down here at the end. It stayed the same because it's a free variable. And then we're going to simplify our matrix so that everything with a variable is separate from everything without a variable. And so if we just added these two matrices together, we would get this again. Finally, we're going to factor out our variable so that we get this form right here. And that's going to be our solution. Uh, the, free the free variable just acts as a scalar, which also means that there'll be every time you have a free variable, the solution is going to have an infinite amount of solutions. So any value for z you put in will give an answer for x. So here are some common questions relating to ax equals b that you may encounter in linear algebra. So when does ax equal b have a solution? And all this means is that is b a linear combination of the columns of a? And you prove this by showing that there's at least one solution x so that ax equals b. Another way to ask this is ax equals b, is ax equal b consistent? And consistent just means, is there a solution to the system of linear equations? So that could be one solution, a unique solution, or there could be infinite, infinitely many solutions. And then is b in the span of a? It's all the same question, just worded differently. So for our first question, we're asked, for some matrix A, is B in the span of A, given that the augmented matrix of A and B, after it's reduced, is this right here? And so it's already reduced, so we can just assign variables to the columns. We don't assign a variable to this last one, because that's B. Then we just write out the rows of the matrix as linear equations. So these are our linear equations. But if you notice, we have a value for z and t. So we can plug it into this equation up here. And so we get x minus 3y plus 4 plus 15 equals negative 5. And then we want to get everything uh, over and just have x equal to all the free variables. So we get x equals 3y minus 24. Next, we're going to write the equations we found here in for x here. And so we have x is 3y minus 24, y is y, z is 2, w is w, and t is 3. Further simplifying, we'll get the y's by themselves, then the w's by themselves, and lastly, the numbers without variables. Then we want to pull out the variables. And so we get x equals 
y times the vector 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, plus w times vector 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, plus vector negative 24, 0, 2, 0, 3. And this is our answer. For our next problem, we're given three equations and asked to find a solution. And so we want to write this in augmented matrix form as such. And then we want to reduce it. And after we row reduce it, we're going to get this matrix right here. And so what this means is that there will be no solution. Because if we look at this bottom row, we will get 0x1 plus 0x2 equals 1. Or in other words, 0 equals 1, which is not correct. So the answer is no solution. In this last question, we're given two vectors and asked if the third vector we're given is a linear combination of the first two. So we want to write it in augmented matrix form, like so. And then row reduce it. Now we're left with the equations right here. x plus 2y equals 4 and y equals 1. We know the value of y, so we can plug it in here. So then this becomes x plus 2 equals 4, so x equals 2. And then we want to write it in this form x equals xy and x is 2 and y is 1. Because we we're able to determine a value for x, that means that 4, negative 7, 5 is a linear combination of vectors r and q.